Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. And again, my partner steps aside. In some ways, there is no isolation, as he does. And in your linearity, it would appear that he would have to go somewhere for me to come in. And it's not so. All he has to do is subdue that which is him in three dimensions and bring that which is him an allowance of a multidimensional state and the peace of God in him comes forward through his higher self and allows me to be. And so what you see is a meld not a compartmentalization of God and man. And that is what we teach. 21 years ago, the potential was that the teaching would be given in this fashion at this time. The year 2010 would bring what it has brought but it is not over. How much have you melded to the energy which is here? When you walk out the door, again, you will be 3D <laughs> and do 3D things as you climb into your vehicles and go about your lives. How much of what this is today is going to relate to that experience? How much can you meld the teaching that would seem odd and unusual to your everyday experience? When you get up in the morning, do you greet the elements in the room? Not normally. When you go about your errands and you see those who you do not know, and you do your shopping and, and some of you go to work, what is it that you could see in them that you've never seen before? Is it possible? Just a little crack in the veil would open and the dimensionality that is being taught this weekend can visit you permanently and you start to see them in the eyes of God. That every single one of them deserves to be here is walking through life as you are. And that they have an akash and some of them are old souls and some of them are not. And it matters not. For each of them has the same DNA that you do with just different information. And that's what I want to talk about. The family is the same. For you all have the core, which is spirit, the divine creator of the universe, universes is upon you and in you and with you as you do the most mundane things <laughs> as you do the chores and mow the lawn hang the laundry brush your teeth the creator of the universe is here Every single stroke in motion of what you do and as you go through your life is part of the scenario of that which stays with the earth when you're gone. And here is an Akashic rule I have never discussed with you. For although you are born equal, I will tell you, you do not have equality in power. That is to say, the old soul leaves a bigger footprint than the one who's just arrived. 
That is why the old souls who are working this planet carry the attribute that less than one half of one percent of humanity has to awaken for permanent earth shift. There is something about a quantum state that physics has discovered and that applies to spirituality and it is this that once an energy is placed anywhere it stays there. And when you leave this planet all that you have deposited in the work that you have done in the tears that you have shed in the epiphanies that you would have, the puzzles you've worked through, the things you've done on your knees in front of God, praising God, thanking God, crying in front of God, are all deposited here and they stay here. All of them. And there is no judgment, there is no right, there is no wrong. The energy of the old soul manifests that which the planet remembers and uses for the quotient of vibratory rate which it then judges what to do next. Gaia responds to your every footstep and it always has but in this new energy it is more profound than ever before. Have you ever really thought about your DNA? You can't see it. It's almost a mythology to think that something is so small yet so important and has quantum parts in your body. But if I could take you into that inner sanctum for a moment and let you feel that which is the truth of your own biological makeup there is sacredness there there are puzzles there there are systems there there is information there and let me tell you what the first anomaly is that you will see already mentioned this day that in your body the hundreds of trillions of molecules you call DNA are identical. And the one you find in your big toe is the same as you find in your heart or your brain. And that ought to tell you something. <laughs> there is a unity there. You are used to a three-dimensional paradigm of your cellular structure being specialized to the organ or organs it represents whether it is fluid in the body that you call blood whether it's a piece of your kidney or your heart or the skin you think of these things as separate you think of them as apart from the others working in a system together but not DNA for DNA is different you can see skin cells almost there's no way you're going to see a piece of DNA the DNA molecule is in a quantum state with itself and if you know about that which is physics you know that there is a quality which physics has given a name for it is not a spiritual name it is not my name they have called it entanglement that is to say being one with everything in a quantum state with no time and no distance if you are the size of DNA you're mighty small let us say that you were part of a molecule of DNA and you wanted to take a walk from your head to your toe it might take years <laughs> that's how far away it is in your size and yet 
DNA all speaks together as one. It's in an entangled state in your body. It knows all of the other parts and they speak to one another and create that which is a field that is dynamic, that is to say always changing, but quantum. There's a field around you. DNA is the system of your consciousness. It is not your brain. Your brain is the electronic engine. It is the synapse of directorship. It is the biology that follows instructions from the overall field of consciousness, which is your DNA. And that has not yet been discovered and it has not yet been validated and it flies in the face of medical science who says that your brain is in charge of everything and your thoughts and your memories. And indeed in three dimensions it looks like that and you can take the brain apart and look at the various lobes and say this one is stimulated when this happens, this one is stimulated when this happens and you'd be right. But is the brain stimulating or is it being stimulated? What if the DNA was the one that's selecting the brain parts to be activated when something happens, cause and effect? What if it was the director all along? What if it's the dynamic and quantum field around DNA that is all that is your consciousness? And is there evidence of that? Could there be evidence of that? It is such an unusual thing to think of. After all, when there's a brain injury, you have a cause and effect. If there's brain death, there's cause and effect. But again, you think of the brain as the top level. What if the DNA was instructing the brain to look that way? using the brain as the engine, the parts needed. If you take a look at an engine, it's very similar. It, parts are specialized and they do certain kinds of things. But they're not the brain. You are as you sit in the driver's seat and tell it what to do. You see the difference? Is there any evidence of it? And again, we say it is everywhere. And it's not being understood, but it's there. That field around you is intelligent. It's intelligent spiritually. It is intelligent physically. It is the director of the entire human self, the brain, all your physiology, all of your memory all of your emotions it's all there information massive amounts of it that make you who you are if the human being is in an accident that severs the spinal cord according to a three-dimensional model a paradigm that says that all signals come from the brain and are transmitted through the nerves into that which makes things work there is a puzzle at hand because that human being who has their spinal cord severed still functions let us say it is severed at the neck quite often it is why does the heart keep beating haven't you been told the brain does that isn't the brain sends a signal down to the heart? Oh, I can prove that. You put a pacemaker in, keep it going. All these things, you're interrupting the nerves from the brain, aren't you? So the brain obviously is sending signals to the heart. Now the brain is disconnected and the heart keeps beating. Not only that, digestion continues. Even that which you would call sexual activity is possible. And the brain is disconnected. Now I ask you, how is such a thing possible? I'll give you a hint. 
<laughs> the DNA is now sending signals through another system. Maybe there's another engine in there. Maybe there's a second brain. Maybe it's etheric. Maybe it's quantum. Your DNA is responsible for far more than you think, dear human being, and it's all there for you to look at. It's in a quantum state with itself, and it is beautiful, and it has a name. If you took DNA and a human being and you were coming from another planet and you were to analyze the human being and you had the tools that are quantum to do so, you would stand back and you would take a deep breath because what you would see in front of you when you analyzed a human being was a tremendous field eight meters wide that goes around that human being and it is filled with sacredness. And that's light would be so great on those instruments that the creature who would look at you would say what power they have. Perhaps we should leave them alone. <laughs> and many do. Because you're just too powerful for them. If the universe is teeming with life as we have said and the galaxy has life as we have said and it's everywhere, as we have said, then why doesn't it visit you more often? And I'll tell you, it visits you more than you think, and it takes one look and goes the other way. Hmm? Because that's what an outsider sees. With an advanced technology that can see, and manipulate, and work with a quantum state where multi-dimensions are as common as your three dimensions and the instruments to measure are as common as those you use to measure three-dimensional things. And I'll close with this. For this particular message is not an endurance event <laughs> like last night. <laughs> Again, I want to bring this up to you. That you got to see your DNA field in the writings of the ancient history presented to you in what you call Holy Scripture. Elijah, I mention yet again for this group to see it and to know it and to realize it. A wise human being whose time was at an end. He wasn't sick or frail. His time was at an end and he knew it. And he chose to ascend. Now in an older energy ascension is to take that which is the power you have to create it to 100% and leave with it. So you leave like you came fully activated. In a new energy, ascension has another meaning and we've given it many times and that is the human being who moves into the next life without dying. There's a lot of ascension going on. Epiphanies create ascension. How many of you can look back on your life and say, that wasn't me? For upon the awakening that many human beings have to the fact that God is inside, you leave the old self somewhere else. You've just ascended. We have told you this. The difference between the old energy and the new energy is profound. Elijah was in the old energy, very old. And Elisha was the one who was his understudy. He loved him. They loved one another. As human spirits can do in a spiritual way, recognize the God in each other. Elisha wanted so much to continue Elijah's work. 
He wanted to take his mantle, and he used that word, the mantle, almost like a, a coat of spirituality with, which that human being had, which he wanted, to, he wanted to put it on and continue Elijah's work. That's what he wanted so bad. It was his passion. And by the way, he did. Elijah, being very wise, says, you can have it if you do one thing. Record my ascension. Write it down, everything you see, so that all will know what it looks like. And he did. Now, how can a three-dimensional human being named Elisha write down interdimensional things that he can't see? And the answer is he can't. But he can at least write down what he saw in three dimensions or what he felt and what the intuition was and the metaphors around that which he could not write because his brain would not compute it or translate it into three dimensional words. Oh, but he got the whole picture. How do you write down how you feel when you're in love? If you were visited at this moment by the entourage of Cryon and it melded with that which is the entourage of you and each human being and you took our hands for just a moment and you felt that which is the love of God because you had felt home, could you write about it? What would you say? And how many words would it take? What would you say about the colors that you can feel emotionally? What would you say about the light that sings to you? And how would you put this in three dimensions? And Elisha couldn't, but he did his best. And so let me review with you what he said. Yet again, I give the story. You have to hear it many times to finally understand the meaning of why I would even give this to you. Because what I'm about to tell you is that Elisha saw Elijah's DNA field fully activated 100%. And when it got to that place, he wrote it down. Elijah walked into the field and he turned into light. A defined ball of light, eight meters wide, fully activated, right there in front of Elijah. And again, I say this to you Elijah, Elijah did not ride a chariot that came down from the sky, nothing came down from the sky. Elijah turned into his own chariot, his own vehicle that he could ride to the heavens. Elisha wrote it all down. He said it almost looked like Elijah had three horses, beautiful, three energies hooked to that which he would ride that chariot into the sky. And all that was metaphoric. Indeed, there were three energies. And we have discussed metaphysically what they were. One of them was the higher self, one of them was the guide entourage, and one of them was the essence of God itself in this DNA. Equal they were. Elisha didn't say there was one big horse and two little ones, did he? Equal they were. I ought to tell you something right there. There's a message in there for you to look at. And what did he call it? He gave it a word in Hebrew. Merkaba. Merkaba. <laughs> Means to ride. And this is the DNA field that each of you have to this very day. And you might say, well, why is it we haven't had those reports anymore? Has it only happened once? And the answer is, oh, no. <laughs> The masters who leave this earth have the same thing happen to them. Now that's going to be confusing to those who think about that which is the Christ on the cross because they didn't get to see that, did they? And that may tell you something about when that master actually died or didn't. And I'm not going to say any more about that. But I will say this, that when the master of love departed, he parted it on his own schedule, not that of men. And he turned into a beautiful ball of light. And he left just like Elijah did. 
on his own terms when he wanted to, appropriately, and with love. And so it is, I give you the story yet again of the power you have in your own DNA. And as you sit there in chairs, only a few inches apart, every single one of you have a field touching the other. And in this room, they combine an entangled state and they create that which is larger than the one. And that is why as you ally your thoughts in prayer and give intent, that you make a bigger difference than the one can or the two can or the three can. And that has been a premise you have been given for a thousand years. That there is more energy in a group than there is in the one when it comes to esoteric things. And I just gave you the reason why. And so family, what are you going to do with it? I want you to walk out this door and I don't want you to change. I don't want you to shut the door on your heart. I want you to carry the energy to those places that are mundane when you're ironing your clothes. I want you to say thank you God for my existence and for my, my akash and how deep it is and how experienced it is. Thank you God for those that I have been in love with and had wonderful times with through the ages. Lord has helped the planet everywhere I walked. Imagine something you do so profound in joy. Can't you feel how it helps the planet? It does. Every time you laugh, <laughs> it does. And so this is the message of crying yet again. The most important thing on earth is you. The elements respond to you. Gaia responds to you. You respond to you. And it's the design. And it's the way it should be. Given in love. Designed in a way that would combine the human being with the creative energy of the universe. Go from here. A little different than you came. And so it is.